I first learned about Faith City Ministries, I actually grew up in Amarillo, and so I had heard of Faith City, um, but I never really had any exposure to um, what Faith City did or anything like that. And I went away to college um, in Bethany, Oklahoma at Southern Nazarene University, and I graduated in 2009, stayed there a whole year, worked at a pediatric hospital, and I got ready to um, pursue my master's. And so I was looking at coming back to Amarillo to do that, and I... Um, was applying at jobs, tons of jobs everywhere, and just had never, didn't have any luck, and um, finally got my resume out on listserv here in Amarillo, and um, got a phone call. Jenna Taylor actually called me um, and said, I think we have a position, and I think you'd be perfect for it, and kind of explained it to me, can you be here Tuesday to interview? Um, and so I drove to Amarillo, interviewed, um, and that's really kind of how I ended up here. It was a total godsend for me. My role with the ministry is I am the Lighthouse Coordinator, um, and so I work with our families primarily at the Lighthouse, and um, mainly we see women and children coming in, but we have some single mom or single women as well, and um, some father. Sometimes we have full families coming in, and so it just kind of depends. But I am a case manager at the Lighthouse, and so I meet with our residents once a week while they're staying here, and I also. Um, I'm in charge of the children's ministry that we have here, and I do a parenting class, and so that's, that's kind of what I do here. The vision at the Lighthouse is to instill hope in our parents that come in, and to our children, um, and to be able to provide um, basic needs are met at Faith City Ministries, and that's what I love about it, is that um, we provide shelter, there's food, there's clothing, um, but our vision at the Lighthouse is I want kids to come in and be able to be a kid and not have to worry about where am I going to sleep tonight or what am I going to wear or am I going to be able to eat um, and they feel safe and so that's a priority for us. We lock down, we're alarmed um, so nobody can come in and out. There's somebody at that front desk monitoring, making sure um, who's coming in and out of our building so safety is a huge priority over there and just we see, when I do an intake, I see moms come in and they're completely broken. Um, a lot of times there's a lot of tears, there's a lot of, I'm, I'm hopeless, I don't have anywhere else to turn. And what we see is, you know, they, they get a shower, they get some food, um, and you begin to see um, them brighten up in their smiles. And, um, and that's what we get to see. But we get the opportunity to offer support and um, encouragement and um, and hope and get to instill hope in these mothers and in these children that come in. The programs that we have at Faith City are we have our Hope for Men and Hope for Women um, recovery program or it's a discipleship program and we have the Lighthouse which um, is a shelter for women and children primarily and we have a shelter um, for the men as well. We have Success University over at the Lighthouse which um, helps our parents go back to school if they want or helps them get their GED and they get an extended stay at the Lighthouse during that time. Um, we have feeding three times a day, six days a week. We um, provide clothing and household items for people and parenting class, life skills classes. We have an incredible opportunity to share the gospel with people on a daily basis and I think, um, I think it's more than just throwing scripture at people and um, it's actually it's it's the way you live your life um, and it's through basic needs it's through um, very practical things that we take for granted on a daily basis that some people don't have um, and so we get the opportunity to share the gospel and actually be hands and feet to people um, we get to to provide a meal for somebody that may not be able to afford one um, or, or, you know, provide a bed and a pillow for somebody that was laying out on the street before. Um, and so I think we have incredible opportunities. We can, we can help pay for school for somebody to, be, to get out of the cycle of poverty, to get out of that cycle um, of hopelessness, um, to start their life over again. And so we have, an, we have that opportunity to present the gospel in a very, in a different way. Uh, obviously the preaching and um, the word and praying with our, um, with our guests and with our residents, but, um, but we get to be Christ's hands and feet to people. We're seeing discipleship um, 
blooming in the people that come in for our program and our Hope for Men and Hope for Women program. We see it um, in our staff members. I know in myself, my walk with the Lord has grown tremendously since I started working here. And um, just, I'm learning things every day. And I'm around things that I never thought that I would be around, and I love it. Um, and I'm challenged in that. Um, we see, um, I see moms coming in, um, and I have an opportunity to pray with them if they want prayer. Um, when I see that they're having a bad day or whatever it may be, I get to offer that prayer with them. And we see moms getting their children back and uh, start just getting their life back, really. And so we get to see that on a daily basis. And so I think that that's a form of discipleship that we're seeing. I get to, in case management, basically what I get to do is I get to hold your hand and I will walk through through this process with you. Um, and so discipleship opportunities are everywhere. And it's just, I think we have that opportunity constantly. It's are you looking for it or not? And when, and when you're looking for it, um, do you seize that opportunity? The best way that you can support Faith City Ministries is obviously through prayer. Um, and we covet your prayers. It's, that's what keeps us going. Um, but there are financial opportunities. There are volunteering opportunities. Um, you know, whether it's helping out with the kids, it's helping out providing clothing, um, donating your time, um, any, anything helps. I do what I do because I have a passion for people. I love people, I love being around people, but more importantly, I love serving the Lord and I feel like I have um, an opportunity, I don't care where you are, you have an opportunity to serve the Lord and you have a choice to make, whether you do that or whether you don't. Um, but here, I get to serve people that are completely broken and have hit rock bottom, so to speak. And uh, I, I love doing that, I love, I love people coming in feeling like they have nowhere else to turn and being able to say, I care about you and you are valued um, and you are not trash. You, you are a child of the Lord. And uh, so being able to do that with somebody and to be, be able to walk them through that process and watch them learn that I am worth something and that I don't, I don't have to live my life like this and I don't have to, um, I don't have to stay down and discouraged and there is hope. And um, so that's why I do what I do.